What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about something and just really address the concern that I get a lot from a lot of people and that is, hey, is my pressure washer too powerful to wash my car? And the answer to that is no, um, but there are definitely some things you're gonna wanna be careful with when you're using a really high PSI pressure washer on your car. Now in this video, we're gonna be doing a little test so I can give you guys a good visual of what I mean about, yeah, it may be a really high PSI pressure washer, but as long as you're careful, you're gonna be okay. Again, just a good visual so it's easier to comprehend. So I've got two stories about this, guys. Number one is when I first started detailing 17 years ago, I went through a little a little school class thing that lasted about a week. They, I bought all my equipment through them and the pressure washer that I was given was a very high PSI very high flow pressure washer. Now, let me tell you guys, it worked great. Like I was able to get through cars faster because it pushed all the dirt and everything off. However, was that too much? Yeah, I would say it probably was. Um, nowadays, I typically like to operate between 900 to 1200 PSI in most cases, and usually around that two GPM or as close to it as I can get. Two GPM meaning two gallons per minute or that, that that's just the flow rate of the water going through the machine. Now that company that I went through and bought all of my equipment from is still in business today, very reputable company um, and uh, don't have any issue with what they sold me. Uh, got the job done perfectly fine. I wouldn't go that route today, just you know, after 17 years of, of building knowledge, it's not the route I would go. But again, totally fine in most circumstances, as long as you're being careful. That kind of brings us to story number two, guys, and that is a story about me, myself. When I first started detailing, I was probably into it for only about a year, was called out to a, a hotel to clean a car that was in town for a car show. It was an old Alfa Romeo Spider, I believe. I don't remember what year, but an older one. Now, because that was an older car, the paint wasn't perfect on it. I was using the specific pressure washer that I was just talking to you guys about that I got when I first started my business, really high PSI. And with that, I would always stay quite a ways back. Um, but on this particular car, it had a piece of older paint that had peeled up, kind of separated from the body and peeled up a little bit. I came by with the pressure washer and it blew that piece right off. The customer was really cool. He's like, no, I, I, was, I was gonna get that addressed anyway, no problem. He, he, I lucked out and got very lucky in that situation that he was such a uh, cool guy. But um, that honestly probably would have happened even with a lower PSI pressure washer. Just that piece was just ready to go. At the same time, that really just put me in the mindset of like, hey, I really need to be careful of every situation, um, especially when you have a higher PSI pressure washer, you, you, you have higher PSI even at further distances and that can cause issues, so just be careful. Now let's go ahead and jump into a test. I wanna give you guys a visual representation of what I mean, um, so let's do this. Okay, so right behind me here, right there, I have a, a Ryobi, this is an electric pressure washer from Ryobi, rated at 3000 PSI, 1.1 GPM. Now I just did a review on this pressure washer. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here or down in the description for you guys so you can go check that out um, if you're interested in this pressure washer. Now, it, within that test, I tested the, the PSI and the actual usable numbers were 2700 PSI. Um, that's the numbers I was getting with the factory nozzle that it came with. Now you can manipulate the PSI and all that kind of stuff through the nozzle. Basically, each nozzle has a degree, right? You can get 15 degree, 25 degree, 40 degree, just de depending on uh, the span of water that you want coming out. However, you also have to look at the orifice size or the what's the actual hole size that uh, the water's passing through. The larger the number of that goes, you can get a 1.1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and so forth. The higher number, it's gonna reduce your PSI and increase your GPM. Lower the, the pressure, increase the flow. Now with those PSI and GPM numbers, it's still, that's the rating exactly right where it's coming out of the nozzle. Okay guys, so what I mean by that is, for example, I just did this little drawing, forgive me for being such a terrible artist, but right here, right where the water's coming out of the nozzle is gonna be your strongest point. So this one, like I said, is getting 2,700 PSI. Um, so it's gonna be right at that point. Now, if you're using a 15 degree nozzle, Right, I'm just gonna do two different spots here, but say a 15 degree nozzle, say like this. So obviously your PSI here will be much higher than it is at two and a half feet out. And then at two and a half feet out, it's gonna be more powerful than it is at five feet out because that power is being dispersed by the angle. So when you switch over to a 40 degree, 40 degree angle, I'm just gonna do it from down here, you're getting a wider fan right off the bat so yeah, your pressure is still the same here, but at this point at two and a half feet, you have much less pressure than you would if you were using that 15 degree nozzle or 25 degree, I don't remember what I said. And same thing at five feet, considerably less pressure here because it's being dispersed through so much angle. 
Now to give a visual of what I mean by that, guys, I have these just two basic empty cardboard boxes. Both exactly the same, same weight cardboard, so no difference there. I'm going to put them down on the ground. I'm going to take my pressure washer at the 15 degree angle, bring it in closer, and we'll see about how far it is before it rips through the box. Then we'll switch over to a 40 and we'll go and see how far it is before it gets to the box. That'll just give a good representation of if you're working on your car's paint and you're, con and you're concerned about it, stay further back and you're going to be okay. But let's go ahead and do this test. Now as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and take this and put it to the 15 degree nozzle if that'll focus for you. I don't know why it won't. There we go, 15 degrees. Okay, so we're all set. I'm going to take it from back here. Bring it in closer and see when it, once it rips through. I'm going to let the power build up in the machine first so that there's no delay and I'm not causing any uh, false readings here. So I'm just going to go pull it. We'll get it all at full power and then I'll go towards the, the cardboard. So right here, guys, I would say, what would you call that? Six inches? And we have penetrated the box. Now I know this isn't completely scientific because the box also got wet, but I'm going to try and match the speed that I went down and see where we get. So now we're going to switch over to the 40 degree nozzle right there. And we're going to do the test again on this box. Now again guys, the last box got to about 6 inches with the 15 degree pattern. Let's go with this one. Here we go. All good. There we go. But look how close we are here. Inches, inches away. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Inches away and with the 15 degree nozzle, we're through, we're completely through, okay? With the 40 degree nozzle, man, it didn't break through. It broke the top surface of it, but it's not all the way, all the way through. There we go, I can push through it now. But so it took to, you know, right about here, an inch or two out before it ripped through this box versus the 15 degree, we're about six inches out and it ripped all the way through. So there you go guys, even though you have a high PSI pressure washer, if you go with a 40 degree angled nozzle, right, it's gonna be dispersing that pressure right off the bat. So say it's a 3,500 PSI pressure washer, as long as right here at that point where it's coming out of the nozzle, yeah, 3,500 PSI. Two and a half feet away, not 3,500 PSI anymore. It's dropping considerably. Five feet out, way more. So if you have a high PSI pressure washer, stay a little bit further back from the car and you're gonna be fine. Now if you're still concerned about it and you actually want to drop the PSI right at that nozzle point, um, I have a whole video on how to do that. I'll link it down in the description for you guys. Basically just adjusting the orifice size of your pressure washer nozzle. Again, making that orifice size bigger, it's gonna, decrease the pressure because there's more flow coming through. It's gonna decrease the pressure and increase the flow. Now I know a lot of people may be asking too, well if there's too much pressure on a certain point, is that gonna strip protection away from the panel of the car, all that kind of good stuff. And again, same thing guys, same principle here. You stay further back, you're not putting that amount of pressure on the paint. So just keep that in mind. So that's it guys, I hope this video helps you. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell and we'll see you on the next one.